previous video, we took a look at two tags that can help us organize our forms and make them accessible. Now, we're going to take a look at a special attribute that can help us make our forms even better. Now, as you've learned in the previous videos, people with vision impairments typically use keyboard navigation to get around web pages. To change the browser focus from one field element to the next, people typically tap the tab key. It's important to create a logical order for your form elements, and you can do this by modifying the tab order or the tab index if necessary. So normally your markup should be in the proper order and allow a user to tab through very easily, but let's just say that for some weird reason, whether it be aesthetic or technical, you had to have some elements in the wrong order in your markup. So let's go ahead and switch these two field sets around to try and simulate that. So I'll just cut that field set and I'll paste it right above the first one here. So now if we go back and refresh, you can see that these two field sets are switched around. Now we're going to use the tab index attribute. In order for tab index to work properly, all the page elements that are accessible by tabbing must contain the tab index attribute. Pressing the tab key will then allow you to jump from one element to another in the ascending order of the tab index values. So let's go ahead and add some tab index attributes. So switching back to the markup here, I'll go ahead and add a tab index to our legend and we'll say 100 at least at first and we'll add a tab index of 101 to our first input and I'll go ahead and just copy and paste this so it can go a little faster and tab index 102 for red, tab index 103 for blue, and we have two more inputs here, tab index 104, and last but not least, tab index 105. And oops, I actually did forget one here on the legend. That should be 104, 105, and 106. So now when we switch back to the browser, our tab index should be normal, but that's not what we want. We want the tab index to be on these personal details first and then these interests second. So in order to do that, we need to flip all of our tab indexes around. So we'll start with personal details and we'll do tab index 100, 101, 102, and then going back up to the top, 103, 104, 105, and 106. And when I switch back to the browser and refresh and start to tab, you can see that I start with first name, go to last name, and then I go to the checkboxes, just like that. Now, one brief thing I would like to note here is that the reason we started with 100 instead of, say, 1, 2, and 3 is because you might want to add tab indices prior to the tab indices that you're adding to begin with. Starting at a number like 100 just makes it easier to do so you don't have to renumber all of the tab indices throughout your page. Great, now there is one last thing I'd like to touch on briefly and that is the topic of captchas. If you're not familiar with them, a captcha is a way of preventing spam bots from filling out forms autonomously. The user typically has to type in some jumbled looking letters that hopefully cannot be read by a computer. Unfortunately, in most cases, these are pretty inaccessible. This is captcha.net, which does a little better by providing an audio version of the jumbled text. There have been many other proposed solutions to this problem that are slightly more accessible but unfortunately, at the present time, there is no de facto method of filtering spam bots while also maintaining accessible forms. Forms can help people input data into web apps, but what about output? In the next video, we'll learn how to make accessible tables for holding our data.